But in the same way, in ordinary cohomology, I have a subvariety, they represent a cohomology class. I have a T invariant subvariety, they represent an equivariant cohomology class. So, Um, so, I will again follow standard notation, and for the X sub W Schubert variety, the corresponding equivariant cohomology class is frequently denoted, so I follow the notation sigma sub W. Some people use S, curly S, but I will use sigma, it's also standard. Okay. Very good. Okay, so this is called the equivariant Schubert class corresponding to W. W or X of W, but of course it's the same information. Okay, very good. Um, so please recall. Ah, yes, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so maybe, uh, maybe I will just say this. How about this? Just a fact. Okay. Okay. Just as in the Grassmannian case. Okay, so in the Grassmannian case on the first day, we only spoke about ordinary cohomology, but it is a similar idea. Fact is that these n factorial classes. form a module basis for HT flags. Okay. Okay, very good. Let's see. That's a good question. Um, so this is this is a this I is think, a special case for the flag. Right? Okay, I think I think. Let's see. There are very many different ways to see this fact. I think, um, but I think the main way to see it is it's just the ordinary cohomology computation. These, this is an even dimensional cell decomposition. The Bruja cell is given even dimensional cell decomposition. So the Schubert varieties, um, yeah, so the Schubert varieties should give um, an ordinary cohomology basis. Yeah? And now, as long as you know that HT flags, um, that the Lee Ray Serra spectral sequence degenerates and that HT flags is nothing else than HT point tensor the ordinary cohomology, then because, uh, because the equivariant Schubert class, I mean, the equivariant piece is just coming along for the ride. So, so these should be, uh, so these should also give a module basis over the equivariant cohomology of a point. I think that's the easiest way to see. Basically, it's just the geometry. You have an even dimensional cell decomposition. Yeah? 
Okay. So, very good. Um, okay. All right. So now, um, now I should do what I want to, I promised. Okay. So now, next. Okay. In order to actually do um, computation, you have to know, well, sorry. Uh, if you believe me so far that the Gorski kotwitz mcpherson is a, is a nice way to do computation, then the next natural question is, okay, what are these for, for at these fixed points? So this is what I wish to just tell you now. So now, Okay, so in other words, IE So I apologize for um, change in notation. Um, but now we're going to have two different SNs interacting. One labels the Schubert classes and the other one labels the fixed points. Yeah, so um, I apologize, but I'm going to sl slightly change notation. So given a V in SN, consider the Schubert class sigma of V, okay? And then when I say the GKM description of Schubert classes, of course, what I mean is the following. Now the question is, can we compute sigma sub V at W at all W in SN? Where, please remember, what I mean by that notation is, is, is the following. So I have HT of flags, yeah? And please remember, I have this restriction map. And please remember, this is nothing else than the sum over the fixed points of the cohomology of a point, yeah? And so when I have a sigma of V, this should go to a list of polynomials, one for every fixed point. And so um, this is why I changed notation slightly. I apologize. So I will use the V to denote the Schubert class that I want to study. And then I want to know what is the value of, I'm sorry, I should have written the following. I apologize. I star of sigma of V is a list of polynomials. Yeah, one for every fixed point. So now I am asking to compute, okay, so for a given sigma v, I want to know, for, for any given w, I want to know what is this polynomial. Does it make sense? Yeah? Okay, so, sorry, there's two SNs floating around. Okay, all right. Um, so if you have a description of these, uh, these components, so the multiplication, so you have two elements, then multiplication is just component. Yes! That's the whole point. That's the so beauty. That's, that's why you get that the is the beauty of are. yes. That is the beauty of this formula. The, the beauty of the formula is precisely what you said. If you want to do some multiplication computation, well, apply the formula, multiply component wise. It could not be easier. Yeah. So so that's why I want to show off how how simple this is. Okay. Very good. Okay. So. Um, Okay, well, so now I'm really doing what uh, I said, the Billy formula. Unfortunately, I need I, some more notation. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so. Okay, uh, very good. So, so our goal is the Billy formula. Actually, by the way, I should also say, um, the Sarah Billy formula is actually much more general for, for general Lie types. I will only tell you what she said for Lie type A, but if you are interested, it actually, uh, there's a formula, I mean, the, the formula is more general, uh, actually more general. Um, uh, so the, the Sarah Billy formula gives a explicit uh, computation. Okay, so that is our goal. Preparation, however, so sorry. 
Okay. All right, so some terminology. I have tried to keep my notation consistent. Okay, so we will say for W, so one of these guys, okay, I will say, ah, before I write this, please remember the SIs, the S1, S2 up to SN minus 1, they generate SN. Okay, so for any permutation, I should be able to write little w as a product of simple transpositions of the form SI i plus 1. Okay, and I do that now. So we say um, that an expression of w in terms of so W, S I 1, S I 2, etc. up to S I, okay, let me say K. So I, these I sub J's are in 1, 2, up to N minus 1. Yeah? Okay. Is a reduced word, uh, and sometimes people say expression, sometimes people say decomposition. Um, I will just say decomposition. of W, and sometimes I will denote it like this, I will just look, so uh, always I am looking at simple transpositions, so sometimes I will just take the relevant information, the I1, the I2 up to IK, so I1, I2 up to IK, like that, okay, um, if the length of the word, in this case I have written k, the length k of this word, so there are k simple transpositions here, um, is minimal. In other words, there does not exist another expression of w in terms of simple transpositions where I can use fewer simple transpositions. Does that make sense? Okay, so, if we're, so I will say it's reduced when the, the length is minimal. This length is the Bruja length. By definition, by definition, and then it's a it's a theorem that it is also equal to the number of inversions. Okay, All right, so this is this is this is the Bruja length. So this k is the Bruja length. Yes. yes? Uh, you can do what uh, Professor Sa did. So you take the subvariety, it's T invariant, you take its uh, Borel construction, that's in that you take its Borel construction, it's that sits inside the Borel construction of the large thing. But then please remember recurrent cohomology is defined to be the Borel construction of the large thing. So you have this, so now I have a subvariety inside of the Borel construction and now I take Poincare duals or, or, or do whatever kind of. Yes, yeah. So I, I don't really care if you learn it or not. Even if you have some, something, some variety inside of a big thing. Yeah, but you have to, I mean, this, this space has to be thing there, otherwise you cannot take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, but uh, this, you take the Poincare dual. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say Poincare dual. It's just the dual, because it's a homology class versus a cohomology class. I'm sorry. So it's just the dual. Not the Poincare dual, sorry. It's just the dual. Yeah? But then, I'm not really sure about this subvariety. So this subvariety gives you uh, homology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And take the dual like mm -hmm. inside of a homology. Mm -hmm. The bigger thing is nice so that we can take the dual of mm -hmm. a dual of the homology class. Yeah. Uh, we're sorry. Ah, we're, uh, yes. Okay. So uh, this is is by definition the Bruja length. Okay. Okay. So example. Or W three two one in one line notation in S three. 
uh, one possible reduced word data on this unit is S1, S2, S1. Okay, now here's a warning right away. Reduced word decompositions are very much not unique. Not even close. Okay, so e.g., here's another one. So you can work out that uh, these are actually equal if you just work out what the permutations are. Okay, but you can still work with these decompositions. Uh, the uh, next... Is, Sorry. Something I'm always confused with the end of the this Yes, data. yes, yes. Uh, Absolutely. So when, when, uh, when I write, one, yes. And then you are taking first and second position. And then... And then you apply S2 yes. on that. So you are exposing second and third position? Or OK, OK. So <laughs> it, is, it is constantly, it is a constant confusion when yes, you work right. with this. Yes, OK. So, so, so when I write, so let me say one thing first. Please, so, so one way to absolutely unambiguously say what this means is, of course, to think about the corresponding bijections. They're just functions from 1 through n to 1 through n. And I literally mean composition of bijections, composition of functions. Right. So if you think about it that way, there's absolutely no ambiguity now. But then, of course, you want to think about just more simply, just transposing. And so if, you, if I multiply on the left, I am transposing names. So I just, so if I look at a one-line notation and I want to apply S2, then I should just look where is 2 and where is 3, and I just transpose those. Oh, okay. If I multiply on the right, if I multiply some permutation on the right, then I should swap, so, and if I'm doing S1, I should swap whatever is in position 1 and 2. So These are different, right? So, what is this? You first... In this notation, what are you doing first, and in which direction are you applying? Uh, well, so this is what I, so, so, okay, so if you want to think about just bijections on the set 1 through n to 1 through n, then I should start here, and, and then compose functions. And then I do so. Then I do S two. Then I do S one. What I just said, which is confusing, I'm sorry, but, but, you see, if I want to work just with one line notation and I write for you a one-line notation of something. But then, I also, but then I also want to say, okay, what is this? Okay, so, so strictly speaking, of course, I should think about this as a bijection, and this as a bijection, and I should compose. But of course, it's easier just to do something on the one-line notation. So what I'm telling you is, if you think about what this means, then you will end up to convince yourself that what this means, if you do it out honestly, it means you look here and you swap whatever is in the positions, two and three. So in the, in the position two and three you swap? Yes. That's always... Uh, it is always confusing. Well, I must confess, I hope I didn't get it wrong. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure well, it's the... No, 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 I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is right. We can, we can fight about it after. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I always have, I always have to work it out each time. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Whenever I'm reading this, this paper and these things, I don't know... Which way? Which way is using and Oh no, but 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 but, but do, do we agree? There's there's an unambiguous meaning to this notation, and it's just a question of how you compute with it. It gets confusing. So you are you are using this notation as a composition of uh, permutations. So in, in other words, uh, homeomorphic. Uh, bijections from okay. the uh, yeah. So bijections and composition so of bijections. So there's you, no ambiguity. So you, are, right? you are flying from left, from right to left. In Correct. This oral. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you just make sure 2, 3, 1 equals 2, 1, 3, and it's 1, 1, 2? What? Um, 
Maybe let's come on. Let's, let's let me fight about That's it okay. later, okay? okay? Because I have seven minutes left. Right. I okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right. So let me tell you what is the partial order. So this is a so it is usually said bruha order. What people mean is a partial order. But people never almost never say bruha partial order. They just say bruha order. Just so you know. Okay, so given two permutations. Okay. Then, in this Bruja order, this is by definition, we say V is less than W, by definition, if V, okay, so I write something slightly vague, but then I promise to explain, okay, but uh, uh, as, uh, appears as a subword of A, and hence any, Reduced word decomposition of W. Okay, so first let me explain what I mean by subword. Okay, so by subword I mean okay, so suppose I write W is SI1, SI2, SI3, etc., up to SIK for some K. Actually, K is the length of W. Okay. And then what I mean by subword is, is what, probably what you expect. You erase some of these. And you take the what is remaining in order. Yeah? Okay, so you erase some. So, you know, maybe some. Okay, so for, erase sum sij and take the remaining in order. Okay? That's what I mean. And so when I say it appears in the subword, I mean take a reduced word decomposition and if I can erase sum and the product that I remain is V, then it, I say V appears as a subword. So let's do an example. Okay, so if W is S1, S2, S1, and if V is S1, okay, then I will say V appears as a subword of W in two different ways. I can erase this S2 and this S1 and look at the remaining S1, or I can erase this S1 and this S2 and look at the remaining S1. Okay? Then, then V appears twice. Yeah? S1, S2, S1. So my notation will be to circle this in a yellow box, or S1, S2, S1, you circle that one in a yellow box, yeah, and throw away the others. Does it make sense? Okay. All right, very good. And now I have three minutes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, now, finally... Okay, you know what? I think what I can only do is to write down the Billy formula, but we need to discuss examples next time. Okay? Uh, but just finally, to write down the Billy formula, one more thing I have to tell you is, so this is still preparation. Okay, so there's a natural SN action. On this polynomial ring. And it's just given by permuting the indices on the variables. Okay? The 
This is just an observation. Okay, very good. Now I can actually state the formula. Unfortunately, um, well, I write it down and we discuss it next uh, tomorrow. So, so please remember my notation. Yeah, so I might write just a list of indices and that corresponds to a reduced Fuji composition. So I apologize for the notation, but um, it gets very clunky very quickly. So I just introduce R sub K for S sub I sub K. Okay? The notation is very terrible. Okay, but anyway, for A, V, and SN. So now here's the formula. S sigma sub V of W is, this is her formula. Okay, so... Of course, now I have to explain it. <laughs> okay, so um, at least I say what the words mean, but then I will have to give examples next time. So where? Okay, so first of all, alpha k. That is just the, by definition um, the simple root u sub i k minus u sub i k plus one. Okay, and the sum, this one, okay, this sum is over all possible reduced subwords J of I, whose product is V. In this example, I would have two sum ends. One for this S1 and one for that S1. So I'm just taking the sum over all possible ways to find subwords that equal V. Okay. Okay, and then this uh, multiplication denotes the multiplication operator. Okay, um, and it is, and this notation says it is included only if the corresponding k is actually in j, i.e. Uh, rk is part of the subword for v. In other words, okay, so here's what I mean. Whatever this element should be, it should be an element in this polynomial ring. So, what this formula says is, okay, find different ways to find V inside of W, and then uh, what you do is you start with the polynomial 1, the constant polynomial 1, and then you will do various things. Please remember, SN acts on polynomials. So, I might operate on, uh, on a given polynomial, and I might also multiply this polynomial by a linear polynomial, ui1, uik minus uik plus 1. But then I will do that for every single one of the uh, simple transpositions that I have in the subword. So eventually I can get something which is um, an interesting polynomial, not just one. Okay? So I'm sorry, this is a... Well, it is a very concrete formula, but it requires to get uh, familiar with it. So we will do that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Sorry.
Okay, we're done for today. But I guess maybe before everybody leaves, I should say, um, so as I say, it does require to get used to this formula, to become familiar with it. But we will do that tomorrow. But already you can see, uh, uh, it is very concrete. It is just about finding a reduced word decomposition and then looking at subwords. So in that sense, it is a very concrete formula. Um, so anyway, one can work with this. <laughs>